And that's 2012 Record of the Year and Song of the Year from the Grammys, Adele's Rolling in the Deep. Welcome to The Letter M. This is Van Farrow, and we are here with Graydon McCashin. We are very glad that you have come to join with us tonight. Um, yes, as Graydon had said a while ago, this is Breakup Night. So we are actually going to be talking about the greatest breakup songs and uh, probably sprinkle in a little bit of those um, anecdotal relationship issues uh, in terms of breakups. Uh, we're very glad to have with us Hannah Sorterup herself. Uh, she's the assistant the station manager at the Moody Campus Radio and the co-host for the show that came before us. Not your average Joe or Hannah. Hey Hannah, how are you doing? Great, I'm happy to be here barely even left the studio before I got to come back so that's always good yes we actually uh, actually we got Hannah uh, just as she was coming out of the studio because it was really hard to get a female uh, guest for the show apparently the word breakup has a lot of uh, you know emotional something uh, you know when you mention it to women I actually was inviting um, co-hosts uh, female co-hosts for the show tonight and uh, apart from the occasional I've never had a boyfriend and I've never broken up uh, I, I, I've gotten reactions such as, you know, really, really weird stares, and uh, there was even one girl who uh, got sassy at me, you know. I was just asking her to be a co-host, and she's like, you know, look at me. Do you think I'm the kind of girl who's like broken up with somebody and all that, or had a boy? Yeah, I know. So Wow, that's really intense. Yes, so I am never going to ask a girl again to host a radio show that talks about breakups. Yeah. Probably a good choice. I'm so, glad you made it out alive. It sounds like you had some... Yeah, it, it, it was a really testy week, actually. Uh, so to all of the girls that I have offended uh, by asking them to guess on the show about breakups, I am really, really sorry. I Yeah, that was pretty tough. <laughs> yes, but we have, uh, we have a great show for you tonight. We sure do. I'm super excited about it. Um, initially, we were just going to mock uh, breakups in movies because there seems to be a lot of really funny terrible relationships that mm -hmm. go really bad we have yeah. uh examples of people getting thrown in jail after they break up mm -hmm. uh drowning that's the titanic that'll be super fun uh -huh. we were gonna do uh you know when you break up with somebody and they become embedded in your subconscious and you can't mm -hmm. get over it and they end up you know destroying your career and reputation and then you need to have like you know you need to have inception done yeah again. but we yeah. thought that would be a little repetitive so we're not going to do that yeah or uh, broken up people still trying to live together, like in the movie The Breakup. Oh, I love that movie. And it's not because of the breakup. <laughs> it's the most awkward thing in the entire world. They're still trying uh -huh. to coexist, but they're broken up. Exactly. Yeah, that, that is a very challenging... Uh, you know, I mean, it's not a lifestyle that we're advocating here at Moody, but, you know... <laughs> it, it, it is but it's easy to make fun of. Oh, so. yes, it is. That was the initial <laughs> thought. Uh, what we're going to do, actually, tonight, we're going to go through my favorite breakup song, Van's favorite breakup song. Uh. Um... Van and I don't really break up with people that often. Well, so. you know what? I break up with people, but I'm the kind of guy who just drops off the face of the earth and never shows up. Like, the last time i broken up with somebody, I came here to the United States and I never came back. I think that's a little okay. intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but then again, it's like, you know, different people have, like, different ways of coping up with breakups, so... Exactly. I'm just mean, I guess. So we're going to take a look at... The way some people cope with their breakups tonight. Some normal people. Apparently, cope with Van uh, has a very extreme way. We're going to look at some other. <laughs> We're going to go through uh, the course of relationships. You know, the course that your relationships mm -hmm. usually take chronologically. We're going to start with the cheesy love song, end with yep. the cheesy love song, and get everything in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, we can play, like, break the record for the number of Taylor Swift song a radio show has played in one hour. Yes. I uh -huh. think we will come close if we don't break mm -hmm. it. Uh, then we're going to look at the top 10 movies oh, and uh, awesome. literature examples of breakups. Uh, again, things mm -hmm. that start wars, get people mm -hmm. thrown in jail, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be lenient with the way we use breakup. Mm -hmm. It could be any bad relationship, really. Um, yeah, uh, because uh, yeah, from, from, from this week, I just realized that a lot of people at Moody have never had any romantic relationships. And, you know, it's, it's a spiritual choice. Wow. Basically, so, you know... Welcome to Moody, Van. <laughs> yes, welcome to Moody. <laughs> yeah, it was a big culture shock, so... That's tough. Okay, yeah. <laughs> before, we, before we do that, uh, I'm just going to take a minute and tell you why we're here, why we do this, why we have a show that talks about movies when we're at a Bible school, and everybody mm -hmm. knows all movies are completely sinful. So, <laughs> the, the letter M, first of all, the name, the letter M, it's a, it's a good name, I think, because mm -hmm. it captures everything that we like here at Moody. We like mm -hmm. movies, we like 
media. movie, we like media, we like mm-hmm. music. music. Um, Jesus starts with an M, if you didn't know that. There's yes. a silent M mm-hmm. in front of the J. A lot of translations cut that. That's the way it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. So Jesus starts with M, and we all love Jesus here. Um, yep. Breakup starts with M. There's also a silent M in front of the word breakup, so that fits in with our thematic. Were you the letter M. With your spelling situation? Uh, were you public schooled with your spelling situation? No, I was Christian schooled. So. Christian schooled. Wow, you think they would have gotten that, like how to spell Jesus? Yeah, I the Christian so, school. But apparently not. It's Definitely in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah, letter M. Jesus. Sure, it is. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually it's, it's in my paraphrase at least. I don't know about the Dead Sea so, you know. Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah, I totally butchered so that. So much blasphemy in one place. <laughs> well, you know we're communications majors, so it's not really our. This is actually <laughs> really <laughs> because, uh, But the reason we're doing this, the reason we're talking about movies and media and music, is because that is our culture's religion. We don't have religion mm-hmm. anymore. We don't care about it really Mm -hmm. um by and large most of the people especially most of the college age students if you talk to them about politics or religion they're going to be bitter jaded frustrated you're not going to be able to make a connection there what you can connect with pretty easily is uh their pain the things that they've gone Mm -hmm. through like breakups and Mm -hmm. especially if you can relate that back or understand their music Mm -hmm. or their movies uh things like that that is essentially their religion and uh you know you wouldn't go to china without understanding the chinese religions or Mm -hmm. philosophies or anything like that Mm -hmm. so if you're being a missionary in america you would have to be pretty stupid to not understand that aspect of american culture so Mm -hmm. that's just why we do this we want you to be good missionaries in your own culture we want you to understand Mm -hmm. your lost brothers and sisters um and missionary starts with them missionary does start with them thank you and it's not the silent them here yeah (laughs) it's like it's a really good M. Mm-hmm. So, and plus the thing is, um, I think it's going to be relationally important for people to be able to, you know, to, to create a dialogue regarding, uh, you know, some of the pop culture items that we have right now, because you know, when when people know that you're closer to them, you know, through through culture, and you can actually have that interaction with them, with you know, with pop culture, they're actually going to be bound to, uh, you know, to to listen to you more about the gospel. So that's why we're doing it here at the letter M. Exactly. It's a great way to start relationships. It's a great way to like segue into deeper conversations and yep. we think it's really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um so that's why we do this. And now we're going to take a look at my favorite breakup song. This song is by Amberlin. I think you've mm-hmm. probably had an Amberlin song every week now. Yeah. At uh, least. They've been really good. Yeah. Honestly. Thank you. Thank you. It's man. like yeah. So we and we have good taste in music. So. We really do. <laughs> I think this is good. That's so That's why I listen. Yeah, thank yes, you, Yes, thank you for listening. This is going well. <laughs> so this is uh, off their album, New Surrender, one of my favorite songs. It is called Breaking. We are back on the letter M on Moody Campus Radio. That was Breaking by Amberlin. That was my personal break favorite breakup song. Um, just real quick, guys. How bitter do you think he sounded on a scale from 1 to 10? Hmm. Is it like a bitter... Oh, you know what? Huh. Actually, from a scale of 1 to 10, I think he's 8. 8? You know? Yeah, he's Ooh. an 8. Just, I don't know, just the timbre. It's, it's, ah, never mind. It's, it's a musical term. But, like, just the quality of his voice when he's singing it. It's just, like, you know, all, almost screaming and stuff. It's, I think he's super bitter. You know, I don't know. It's, you know, it's just me. Hannah? Um, I don't think he sounded extremely bitter, but I'm not super familiar with the song. This might have been only the second time I've heard it, um, so I can't give a super accurate judgment, but I think I'd give him around a six or so. Six? Six. Because he mm-hmm. wasn't, I mean, from what I had heard, calling her sad names or no, there was crying a- at all while he mm-hmm. was singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Things. I'm going to sound like I'm compromising now, but I mm-hmm. honestly had this in my head before I heard your numbers. I was going to say seven. Seven? The working title of the song was... <laughs> Six, seven, eight. Yeah, I only know this because I'm a nerd, but the working title of the song was Bittersweet Memories. Mm-hmm. And it has the word bitter in it, but it also has the word sweet, so I don't mm-hmm. think it's... It's not yeah. that bad. I think Bittersweet Memories is a really good song. Like, mm-hmm. a really good name for a breakup song, because mm-hmm. I feel like that's what breakups are about. Oh yeah, it's bittersweet. Most of, sweet. most of the time but for some people it's just super bitter and for some people unexplicably it's just sweet but you know <laughs> if you're like normal it's bittersweet so if you're normal yeah if I you're like normal that. so yeah i mean i'm not normal so it's sweet for me but <laughs> but uh have any of you guys like I, I guess experienced a breakup whether it's like a romantic breakup or i don't want to talk about it 
Oh, defensive mode. Getting all emotional. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. They're all tearing up here at the studio right now. All right, look, look. Before this goes any further, we're going to listen to Van's favorite breakup song. Uh, um, this needs a little bit of introduction. Okay. This is a national thing, actually. I mean, I, I kind of call it personally the Philippine National Breakup Anthem. So uh, for all of those Filipinos who are listening out there, you would know what I'm, th- what I'm talking about. This is a song that's composed by a Filipino composer, but it's sung in English. And uh, in the Philippines, if ever you've broken up with somebody and you've moved on for that, you know, from, from that person, this is the song that you sing on the karaoke machine when you hang out with your friends on a Saturday night. So, yes, uh, that's why it's called the Philippine National Breakup Anthem. So uh, this song is You've Made Me Stronger, and this is actually the, uh, the newer version of this song. It's uh, sung by Ram Chavez. So, uh, yeah, Graydon, hit it. We are back on the letter M, MCR, Moody Campus Radio, the best radio station in the entire world. Yes, and you should be listening to it if you're a cool kid. Yeah, and if you're a cool kid, you yes. also have Twitter, and you should be tweeting us at, at the letter M on MCR. Yes, or interacting with our Facebook page, the letter M. So I think it's uh, I think the uh, the link, well, it's the letter M dot MCR, but you can just all figure it out. Just type in there the letter M. If you see, you know, our poster, which is the letter M, you know, it's it's... You it's know, a it's gorgeous poster. Yeah, it's yes. beautiful. Thanks really to Jesse like Demmer. I don't know if I pronounced his name right. Yeah, that's right. Jesse, Jesse Demmer. you are a rock star. I love you. Van, we were talking about this while I was playing. I'm not entirely convinced that it isn't an honest assessment of what happened. It is not an honest assessment, honestly. It's like when you tell somebody that you are not, a, you know, that I am not at the losing end of like a breakup, that's just like, that's just heavy, you know. So I, I don't think it's an honest assessment, but you know, if you're in the Philippines and you've broken up with somebody and you're singing this on the karaoke machine on a Saturday night, you know, honest assessments never matter. You just want to like sing your heart out and say, "I've moved on. I will survive." That's so. not just in the Philippines. That happens. That happens there. It so happens too. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you don't think you don't think he really was stronger because of the relationship? And do you think he learned anything out of the relationship, or do you think he's just saying that to make like to cope? Oh my gosh, I don't want to go into that because I've had like a lengthy diatribe with the people I was having a road trip with last Saturday about breakup songs. When people say that they're stronger after breakup and all that, I actually told them that, you know, well, when you compose songs about like being stronger after breakup, I don't think you've moved on. And I was actually talking with like two women and a man and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty long conversation. I think we're gonna run out if I start to, like you know talk about it. But yeah, I, I you know I I, th- I think though this guy has already moved on. You know, and so he has. I he think has he has. On? Yeah, and uh, I, I think it's more of like a cultural thing. Like for me, it sounds like he's moved on. But you know, uh-huh. I guess if you're not Filipino or something, it's like you can kind of like sense that. But so, what's your bitterness rating? Bitterness rating for this? I think it's a four. I I, I think he's just moved on. You know. Four is not bad. I'd, I'd say calm down a little bit. I think he used to be better, though. He used to be better, yeah, because he. I mean, he's not gonna say he's uh, you know he's not on the losing end if he wasn't bitter before, you know. That's fair. I think that he mm-hmm. might be being a little bit defensive by saying though, like, a little oh, bit it's defensive, maybe yeah. stronger. Like mm-hmm. it's like one final okay. parting shot before they're done. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I think I'd that. give it a six again. A six, six again. again. Ooh, Ooh, that's interesting. All right, this song has no bitterness in it. We're going to play Nightmare by 117. This mm-hmm. is the part where we look at chronologically how a relationship goes. We're going to start mm-hmm. with a cheesy love song, end with a cheesy love song, and look at everything in the middle. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, this is pretty yeah, straightforward. Yeah, because uh, every, every breakup actually begins with a sweet relationship. So Theoretically, at least. Theoretically, yeah. Most of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not sweet. Maybe not sweet, but, you know, pretty good. This is Nightmare by 117 on Moody Campus Radio. And this is Hannah Soderup, um, guest starring on The Letter M with Graydon and Van Farrow, getting to weigh in on some breakup songs. Do opinions. you not know my last name? Nick Cashin? <laughs> oh, <laughs> good job. The, the Letter M. Yeah. Nick Cashin. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, originally, before I met Van, my co host name was Matthew, so it wasn't like egotistical. It was like, oh, McCashin, mm-hmm. Matthew, it makes sense. McCashin, and Jesus, too. Yep. So that was a cheesy love song. That was the his head's in the clouds. He's not giving reality an accurate mm-hmm. assessment. Don't you just love it if a relationship can just stay that way forever? You know, it's just like all sweet, always like, I don't know. 
you know, it's. I like think we need to give Van a nostalgic rating right now. <laughs> I think it's like a nine point seven. What do you think? At least. Yeah, it's probably an eleven. Eleven. Whoa. With coffee, that's gonna be fifteen. Yeah. Your heads in the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that was the cheesy love song. That was when everything's gonna go great forever. Mm-hmm. Um, this yeah. next one by Teo Cruz and Ludacris. It's called "Break Your Heart." I think this mm-hmm. is more. You, this is one of those relationships, and we put this towards the beginning, where you kind of know it's gonna go bad from the uh, beginning, yeah. and you get involved anyway, which I think we've all done, right? Because you because you always think that something is going to change. Oh yeah, you know, women yeah. especially uh-huh. see men and they look at them and they're like, "Oh mm-hmm. yeah, he's gonna change. He's gonna grow up." Mm-hmm. How does that usually go for you? Um, it doesn't usually work out well. Okay, mm-hmm. not just from personal experience. No. Yeah. And is okay. it because you're like thinking of changing the person himself, or? I think it's because women sometimes view men as projects. Oh. Whoa, that's a big revelation. I'm I gonna never leave knew that. that. Alone. I, I never yeah. knew that. Wow. And we should probably go into our song now. Yep. <laughs> I think we do this like. And we're back at the letter M with Graydon McCashin and Van Farrow, and we have with us Hannah Sorter up. Hi, Hannah. How are you doing right now? I'm doing great. Yes, are you enjoying the letter M? I am. I'm enjoying it immensely. You guys are fun to be with. Wow, thanks. Yes, and uh, yeah, we we just like to uh, um, to greet some of our listeners who have been uh, interacting with our Facebook page. So if you want your name to be heard over the Moody Airwaves, uh, yes, just uh, s- uh, just shoot us a tweet at Twitter on uh, at the letter M on MCR, or go to our Facebook page. So some of our listeners who uh, let us know that they're actually listening, uh, Angel McAdams. Yes, uh, Angel is a very good friend of mine. Uh, she a- she actually uh, directs some of our video series at church, and uh, Megan. Megan, uh, I don't know her last name. Gehrig. M- Megan Gehrig. Not related to Lou Gehrig, so... Oh. <laughs> don't have to worry about, about ALCS there. Yes, so uh, thank you very much for listening. So if you want your me- if, if you want your name mentioned... Oh my gosh, I'm getting dyslexic again. If, if you want your name mentioned, uh, yes, just, uh, just interact with our Facebook or Twitter page. I just got a text from Olivia Westwood who joined us a couple weeks ago. Yes, she might be yes. able to come at nine. Oh, that would be great. Help yes. us out a little bit. Yeah, just to uh, just to uh, remind you, Olivia Westwood uh, actually co-hosted with Graydon when uh, I was uh, playing a singing zombie in uh, Spoon River like three three weeks ago. Talked about the adjustment bureau. The adjustment super bureau. Fun. Yeah, and uh, I think you did uh, Anne Berlin's uh, cities. We album. did. She couldn't say for that. Um, Adam Loomis did yes. that with me. Adam it was, Loomis. I yes. don't know. We enjoyed mm-hmm. it. We're nerds, so mm-hmm. I don't know if everybody else agreed. But uh, that was Teo Cruz <coughs> or Tayo Cruz or Tayo Cruz. You're Break in the your radio. Heart. You can pronounce it however you want. Oh, I don't know. Yes. He's famous. Mm-hmm. So Te- it's probably Teo. Teo. Yeah, I don't know. He sounds Hispanic. Usually, you pronounce it. Ludacris that way. said Tayo in the song. Well, Speaking of the lyrics, Luda Chris song, has another uh, has another speech pattern of his own. So. Yeah, maybe <laughs> he probably his name needed it. Means ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. He probably uh-huh. just needed it to rhyme with some other random word, so he mm-hmm. mispronounced it. Probably. Yeah. But as far as the bitterness rating on this one, I don't think anybody sounds bitter in this song. I think they're just planning on making somebody else bitter. So I'm going to give it a two. I think it's a three. It's a three, and I just want to be like imitating you, so it's a three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'm 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 glad that we have that connection that going on. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd give it pretty low too, like a, mm-hmm. a, a two or a three. I think it makes yeah. me a little bitter listening to mm-hmm. it. This guy's planning this, but yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's like you know, you're not bitter anymore when you want to hurt somebody else. Although, I mean, at times it might be like the case, but in this song, I don't think so. I think you have a whole other set yeah. of problems you need to deal with. Oh yes, <laughs> you need to see a pre-counseling major who's uh, majoring at Moody right now if you have that same problem. So, and in the song, it didn't necessarily say that he wanted to. It mm-hmm. just said that it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. You know. Yeah. So I don't know. This is like the uh, the guy on your uh, on your floor the other week who's like, if I can't be happy, anyone can. Oh be happy. yeah, I was it sitting in my like room. Filipino soap opera. I was sitting in my room reading something, <laughs> and I just hear outside the window, like not the window, outside my room, somebody walking through the hall, and he just shouted, "If I can't be happy, no one can be happy." And now that's I, like fifteen over ten bitter. Yeah, that yeah. was that was pretty intense. Yeah, I do that at twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. Nice rating. I don't think you guys understand how the scale works. You've been yeah. throwing out some pretty big numbers. <laughs> that's really bitter. Yeah, it, yeah, it did sound bitter. So if you are that guy who actually shouted that, you can interact on our Facebook and Twitter page. Yes, we're actually known for shameless plugs. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this yeah. is the part of the show where I don't know what to say, so we're just going to go to another song. <laughs> this song uh, by 98 Degrees is called The Hardest Thing. Um, oh, yeah. If you're old school or if you're if you're anyone from Dryer 3, you would appreciate this song. Yeah. Also, this was, if you're old. This also, is if you're old. <laughs> as close as I can get to an actual, they're breaking up in the song. Taylor Swift mm -hmm. probably had something like that. I didn't look hard enough for it. And we need a little bit of diversity. So here is... 98 Degrees, the hardest thing on the letter M. And I'm Hannah Sutterup on the letter M with Graydon McCashin and Ben Farrow. And that was The Man Who Can't Be Moved by the script. Um, I really mm -hmm. like that song. I feel like it kind of has a little bit of a melancholy hopefulness mm -hmm. that maybe they'll be able to get back together. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously he's pretty helpful, but I think it has some really deep lyrics, which mm -hmm. is kind of unusual in breakup songs. I feel like a yeah. lot of them are just bitter and angry, but this guy mm -hmm. really just wants this girl back, which mm -hmm. I think is... And she's cute. not coming back. Which is awful. If she ever yes. happens down that street one more time, maybe. Uh -huh. Maybe. That would be a little creepy, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're just... Yeah, it's just kind of like the, uh, the adjustment bureau. He rides the same bus every day for the next three years just to see if she's going to show up. If exactly. you let a girl get that kind of a hold on your life, you might want to rethink some stuff. It's time to get a life. Yeah. <laughs> when he, that he happens. He is camping on the street corner, so, you know. Especially because, like, in movies, that's mm -hmm. shown as something, like, cute and romantic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But, like, in the real world, not so much. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's a little creepy. It is really sweet, though, just theoretically. Although it's kind of nice to hold on to a girl, you know. I don't know. I mean, it's like, you know, if, if, if that girl actually looks like Natalie Portman or something like that, uh, that's true. I'd hold on. It would know? be wild, man. <laughs> I think, too, yeah. that um, it's nice to see that he's actually making the effort to mm -hmm. reconcile and figure yeah. things out, which is kind of a rare thing. A lot of times mm -hmm. people just write it off. I think well, a lot of times when you go through a breakup, mm -hmm. that's one of the things you go through. Like, yeah. maybe we can get back together. Maybe we can make this work. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I show that I'm really committed, you know, she'll come back. But mm -hmm. then... This is where we get into, you know, the bitterness rating is actually going to make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, our next song, which I'm sure you guys have all heard and probably think is ever played on the radio. Now that we're playing it on a moody campus radio, you're probably going to be pretty ticked. Yep. But, uh, like, you'll hear this a lot. Um, <laughs> this is somebody I used to know. My Goatee. Yeah, we're back on the letter M, moody campus radio. Thank you all for listening. We have... Uh, Jeremy Brown, my old youth pastor, probably the coolest person in the world outside of God. Wow. Yeah. That's, That's really a, cool. Yeah, That's and President really Nyquist, if you're listening. I mm. love you. Um, <laughs> you like that? Yeah. So there we go. Um, bitterness rating for that one. I'm going to go um, ahead and go 37. Yeah, I was actually thinking 40 myself. 40? That's not too far off. I think I'd go into 42. Wow. 40? 42? 42. Yeah. Like, the number 42, I not mean, 40 it's like, additionally? When you talk about somebody who used to, like, you know, who used to be with as somebody that I used to know, yeah. it's like, come on! That's pretty. Seriously. It's like, we yeah. didn't, like, drug you or anything to, like, forget you, you know? That's just too bitter for me. What I love like, about this is we yeah. get two bitter people. When the, <laughs> when the girl who sounds like Katy Perry sings, uh -huh. she's really bitter, too. So we yeah. got both sides of it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, too. I think she kind of did stuff to deserve his bitterness. Oh, yeah, though. definitely. Like, the whole change of number thing. Mm -hmm. I actually oh, had yeah. someone advise me once, though, after you break up with someone, that you should change your number, which I mm -hmm. think is a little borderline psycho. Yeah. You know what? This is actually one question that I've been wanting to ask a woman, but, like, I don't know. I might get slapped or anything, so but you since... you wait for live radio to ask it. Yes, and since you're, like, about, like, 10 feet away from me, you know, I'll be safe. But, like, why do women cut their hair after a breakup? I never got that. Um, I think there's a few different reasons. I think uh -huh. they feel like they need to change. Uh -huh. And cutting your hair is like a non-drastic change. I mean, like non nose change. reconstruction surgery, a little more drastic. <laughs> uh, After a breakup? <laughs> also, yeah. I mean, I'm sure some people do it. But well, that's yes, why Hollywood yes. stars get plastic surgery so often. So it's the divorces. Yeah, yeah, they break up often. Also, I think um, a lot of guys express that they like long hair. Like a lot uh -huh. of guys that I know. Um, mm -hmm. So I think sometimes it might be a little bit of spite thing, which I think mm -hmm. is kind of ironic because you're not hurting them by cutting your hair. You're just, you know, changing something for yourself. Uh -huh. And I think also it's kind of like a lot of women I know have this thing like, 
Okay, he broke up with me, and now I need to prove to myself and to him and to the rest of the world that I'm still an attractive person, even though he broke up with me. So wow. I think that might be some of the psychology behind it, too. And it cuts your hair because you think you're more beautiful when you have, like, cut hair. I mean, I don't know. I think it's just <laughs> something to cope with. I don't know. Wow. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I actually never noticed that about... A lot of girls do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like they're, uh, you know, breakup you know, meme or something. I don't know how you call it. It's just, new project uh, for you guys. New assignment. It, mm-hmm. Tweet us pictures of girls with their hair cut and give them a bitterness mm-hmm. rating. Yeah, it's actually, if uh, if you've cut your hair after a breakup, you should better donate that hair to Locks of Love. They make wigs for, um, you know, kids with, uh, with we cancer. We are the shameless plug radio yes. show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so far we've had cheesy love song. This is going to go great. Break your heart. Uh, I know this is going to end badly, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, 98 Degrees, the hardest thing, the actual breakup song. Yes. Then that phase where you think you might get back together. Then that phase where you're totally angry at him. Or, or her. Yeah, him yeah. or her. I was going to... Him or her, yeah. supposed to say them. It came out weird. <laughs> um, now, finally, we're getting to a Taylor Swift song. This is oh. my favorite. I think this sounds like Yellow Card, so it's awesome. Um, this is Haunted by Taylor Swift. This is the letter M on Moody Campus Radio. Chloe, my little sister, if you're listening, I just want to reiterate, I do not like Taylor Swift. The violins in that song are not amazing, and <laughs> I do not have that song on my MP3 player. Yeah, and she's like a nine and a half bitter in general. Uh, Maybe only like an eight in this song. Have never heard Taylor Swift that violent before. Wow. Uh, Picture to burn. Yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah. Better than revenge. No. (laughs) Pretty violent. Yeah, she's a little psycho. Yeah. She's the ex-girlfriend nobody wants. Oh yeah. Although you know what, it's like I kind of like observed that like if you're a songwriter and you broke up with your boyfriend and you write a song about your breakup, you actually get a million dollars and you win a Grammy. It's so amazing. It happened to Taylor Swift and Adele. What am I doing wrong? Yeah, I know. Not you writing probably like, songs. Yeah. Journaling is apparently overrated. <laughs> I just start songwriting. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, break up with somebody and, you know, write a song, sing about it, and you win a Grammy and, you know, yeah, earn a million dollars. Yeah, I don't actually have someone to break up with. So I uh, have to do the first I think that was an offer, step in the process. That was an offer. We're yeah. both single I, and available. I don't think that was an offer. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we've about, only announced that on about, about half this of our show. No worries. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Okay, so um, they didn't want to deal with it anymore. Then they had kind of like the relapse, depressed mm-hmm. thing with Haunted. Yeah. Um, now we're going when it gets really bad. Um, this song is called My Girl's Ex-Boyfriend Ooh. by... I think I put the wrong song on here. Did you? Oh, no, oh, I didn't. No, no, no. I didn't. You did? This is... Perspective change, okay? Um, this is not... This is not... This is, you know, the two people break up, and uh-huh. then a third person comes in and dates the girl, mm-hmm. and that's from his perspective. So this is the oh, really moved Oh, my on. gosh. Mm-hmm. No, this is where it's really bad for one person because she's really moved on oh, to the point where she's with somebody. She's, yeah. Like actually, I said, this what, is where yeah. it gets really bad. And mm-hmm. we'll see. I'm actually going to just let this song play and then we're going to go right to good Charlotte or Charletti. Charlotte. Char- Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. It's probably Charlotte if you're French. Yeah, good Charlotte. Yeah. So we're going to hear We're going to hear about um, what happens when... You know, mm-hmm. you break up with somebody and then somebody else starts dating them. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to go straight to the result of that, which is mm-hmm. I don't want to be in love. Oh. That was I Don't Want to Be in Love by Good Charlotte. Oh. One of my favorite songs, actually. It's really good. I don't know how good your bass is, and this is on the radio, so I don't know if, you know, how that works. Mm-hmm. But if you can, go download that song. Uh, turn up the bass yeah don't worry about what people think they'll get over it you know they'll probably start dancing after a couple seconds they'll come down to tell you to turn it off and then they'll dance oh my gosh it just sounds like me after a breakup it's a good way to invite people <laughs> to a dance party actually is to have mm-hmm. your music too loud yeah and then people come and mm-hmm. then they dance yeah that better be spontaneous <laughs> oh always yeah for so sure so much spontaneity yeah spontaneity Spon- yeah so oh, how do you pronounce it spontaneity <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Anyway. So, you go from not wanting to be in love and being really sad because, you know, your girl's dating like your best bitter, friend. Like, 100 to 10. Really? Yeah, if you don't want to be in love after a breakup, that is so bitter. It's like, you've just, like, I don't know, you've just, like, exempted, like, five 
five, I, I don't know, it's like however many people there are on Earth. It's like, you don't want to be in love? Seriously, just after a breakup. I that think is that, horrible. I think that goes past being bitter and yeah. just as like, you're hurt then. You know, it's yeah. like, you're not necessarily angry or malicious mm-hmm. at all. It's just, you're really hurt and you don't want to go through it again. I yeah, think but it can be a good perspective, though, because right mm-hmm. after you break up, you shouldn't want to be in love with anybody else. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Only for a little yeah. while, but, like, you know, never in love. Yeah, like, that's a at crazy. all. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it's like you'd either turn to, like, a suicidal maniac or you're, you know, you're just, like, shooting people. Celibacy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Celibacy, yeah. That's how monks mm-hmm. start. <laughs> they get dumped and they're just like, all right, well, yeah. we're not doing that again. So, <laughs> all right. So, best I can tell. You go through all that we've done. Um, you're completely in love. You realize it's not going to work. You try it anyway. Mm-hmm. Then you yeah. actually break up. Then you think it might it get might back together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you just don't want anything to do with her. And then she just kind of or him, because I'm not speaking from experience. And then yes. it just kind of comes back <laughs> a little bit, maybe with haunted. Then she starts stating your best friend, and that's just not uh, good. So you don't want to yeah. be in love anymore. And then you meet somebody else. Mm-hmm. And this happens. And we're back here at the Letter M with Graydon McCashin and Van Farrow and with our guest, Hannah Sorterup. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, you did. I'm really Sort her up. Okay, that's great. Wow, we've actually just uh, run, run the gamut of like relationships uh, with songs. This is so exciting. We've never done this before. No, we definitely haven't. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad that we mm-hmm. did. I'm glad we're breaking barriers. That's really awesome. Yeah. So uh, actually, we've been uh, we've been talking about uh, breakups for now, and we're not kind of like really like talking about like how painful break breakups are or all that. But we're just basically talking about like um, you know what are the things that make up breakups, and uh, you know what are the things that people actually do when they are breaking up and when they've already broken up with somebody. So if you have any ideas or if you're emotionally prepared for it, if you want to share your breakup story you can actually um put it on twitter on our twitter page at the letter m on mcr or on our facebook page so uh yes if you just want to weigh in on like you know why women cut their hair after a breakup or why men actually uh you know just sit down and watch football after a breakup yeah you can just uh let us know about that on our facebook and twitter page Uh, you know what i have never heard of anything that you know men usually do after a breakup I, I've never heard of anything. Like, women have, like, they eat, like, a tub of ice cream, or they eat, like, a lot of chocolate, or they Don't cut their hair. Don't girls do that anyway? Yeah, I know, but, like, I've, I've, I've never heard of, like, you know, what do guys do Can when I they break Can I just clarify? Up? Not <laughs> all women do the ice cream thing. Actually, when I am upset, uh-huh. I don't eat and I work out. You work so out. I kind of am the anti- That sounds kind of boyish. woman thing to do. I know, it's kind of strange. Uh-huh. Wow, you're not eating ice cream like the other women. No, and I, no, I, I, I am not generalizing. I eat when I'm happy, not when I'm upset. Ah, uh, that's probably a good thing. That's actually a healthy choice. Yeah, because I mean, after a breakup, you don't want to be like you know, you don't want to take yourself off the market by being you know, on the heavy side. So exactly. Yeah. So moving on. <laughs> Can't believe it went there. Oh, it went. There. <laughs> oh, it went there. Yes. So, so, is there anything specific that men do, or just like does it completely vary um, from me? Well, to if man? you're not Christian, you drink beer with your guys, you watch football, and then the next day you go to work, and it's like nothing happened. So Christian men, don't you try to watch pretend football? like nothing happened. Christian yeah. men don't shouldn't in excess mm-hmm. or ever if they sign something that said they wouldn't mm-hmm. or are underage drink beer. Yeah, did good I qualify that enough? Yeah, good job with that. Good. Yeah, I, I don't know how Christian how, how Christian men do it though, because like when I did like you know when I did break up before you know I just like drop off the face of the earth. I wasn't a Christian at that time. You so. just moved out of the country. Yeah, I just good moved call. out of the country and never came back. So I don't know. How long ago was this? That was like seven years ago. Oh my! That was gosh. like high school. Yeah. Wow. You literally That's dropped off the face of the earth. <laughs> yes, I dropped off the face of the earth. <laughs> That's I want to make a serious high school relationship. Phone well, call you know, I, I mean, th- there's a lot of things that's going on in there too, but you know, uh, we'll just uh, discuss it in another episode because uh, you were kind of like short in time. Actually. Yeah, before somebody it's, starts yeah. crying, uh-huh. um, <laughs> this is this is how this idea actually started. The music wasn't supposed to be the main part of the thing when mm-hmm. I made the schedule. It yeah, I messed it up a little bit, but uh, we're gonna look at the top nine, not ten, because I. You know, we can't think of the other movie. Yeah, I can't think of one more. Um, yeah. The top nine relationships. This doesn't have to be a breakup. Like I said, we're mm-hmm. going to be lenient with this. It, the yeah. point is, it's terrible and dramatic. From uh, literature, movies, 
and movies mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, television shows. So, um, oh yes, first one. Uh, let's start with Homer, the Iliad. Uh, oh my God! You should be familiar with this. Yeah. Maybe you're not. It's if you've been listening on your English classes when you were in high school, yeah, you should be for familiar sure. with this. Or any Greek and Roman mm -hmm. stuff that you've taken. Yeah, I, I don't this. know if they do this at Moody. Probably. I hope so. Probably not. It's really good. If we're not doing it at Moody, it's a suggestion. Yeah. yeah. The, I'm officially saying that we should do this at Moody. Yeah. Here's what happens. This is when you break up with somebody or a relationship goes bad mm -hmm. or she leaves you and mm -hmm. then you go and start a war over it and that mm -hmm. war 4,000 years later is literally legendary and Brad Pitt stars in a movie about it Yep. and you know Orlando Bloom is in it and he looks really feminine for some reason <laughs> that's an intense breakup yeah so oh, yeah. Th that, that's what happens in the Iliad, if you're not familiar, mm -hmm. um, Helen of Troy goes the face off. that launched a thousand ships. Exactly. Literally. Yes. Launched wow. a thousand ships. Uh -huh. She was so freaking hot mm -hmm. that he just had to have her back. So mm -hmm. he takes his army with Achilles mm -hmm. and everybody else and he goes and attacks Troy. You know what the nastiest thing about this breakup is? She got willingly kidnapped. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's a complicated thing. Uh huh. It's really kind of a bummer. Mm hmm. So, um,. That's an example. That, that's that's one of the things you don't want to do once you break up. Mm -hmm. You don't want to start a war that lasts ten years and kill a lot of people. Lots of and, people. Yeah. Lots of people. Just, Lots of heroes made in that war. Yeah. Though. Uh huh. They burned the city down eventually. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, then they made this like wooden horse where people are like inside and stuff. I mean, this is like this is, like dope. Yeah, that was an intense yeah. breakup. That's a lot uh -huh. more than cutting your hair. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a lot yeah. more than cutting your hair. Maybe, <laughs> even leaving the country. That's maybe a lot more than that's country. the answer to what guys do when they get dumped they mm -hmm. launch a war and make like wooden horses with people in it <laughs> yeah i wonder if there's some freudian analysis we can do that like yeah for pre-counseling majors part. yeah for pre-counseling majors if you want to like uh weigh in on it you can go on our twitter page at the letter m on mcr or our facebook page the letter m dot mcr tell us what the horse means pre-counseling majors yes there, there must be like some psychological thing on the horse yeah what's our next movie uh, Gone with the Wind. Oh, you want to take that one? Yes, it's my oh. most favorite film of all time. If you've watched this three-hour, 56-minute film, by the end of the film, and uh, Brett Butler, who's played by Clark Gable, a guy who's been born and who became a movie star before everyone here has been born, when he finally breaks up with Scarlett O'Hara, which is the, uh, the heroine of the movie, I think the line that he delivered here is like much deserved. You know, this girl, this woman has been like all out, really, really mean. It's like, you know, she's like, I'll never be hungry again, even if I lie, steal, cheat, or, or kill kind of girl. So like when Clark Gable finally breaks up with her in a movie and you know, she's like, where, what, what shall I, you know, where shall I go? What shall I do? And she's, and he's like, frankly, I don't really, I don't really care. That's what he says. And then just walks out, break up. And she's like crying on the stairs. Oh my gosh. If, if you can watch that movie or like YouTube it, that would be really, really great. So, um, yes, actually, uh, Marcus Goebel, if you're listening right now, we should set a date, uh, you know, for us to watch this movie. I know you've been wanting to watch this movie for, for quite a while. So, yes, if you want to look up that breakup, just look it up on YouTube. What's our next movie? Our next movie. Hannah, did you see a movie on that list that you kind of... Yeah, did you kind of like wanted a, to talk um, about? Or? Yeah, I'll talk about Shrek, actually. Shrek, oh, that's an interesting relationship. I yeah. love that movie. That is a very strange relationship because I think mm -hmm. maybe they go into the relationship, especially she does. Well, mm -hmm. She spends the entire movie with preconceived notions, mm -hmm. which I think is a really big problem in relationships. Yeah. You kind of expect one thing, another thing happens. Mm -hmm. I would have to say that generally my preconceived notions yep. don't involve me turning into an ogre. <laughs> I mean, literally. Figuratively, oh yeah, for sure. But, uh -huh. I mean, not not literally. Um, so I think that that's kind of an unhealthy relationship because it's based on preconceived Unhealthy notions. relationship. <laughs> but it has, it has a happy ending and it I mean, I don't know, I think it turns out well enough. They get yeah. married. Well, I mean, sometimes when we're lives together, you know, sometimes when we get into relationships, you know, a lot of people actually bring these preconceived notions for us. Like in the Philippines, for us, like when we go into a relationship, we should have already graduated from college and the person we should be marrying should be either a lawyer or a doctor. That's wow. how it always is. Yeah. No so, pressure. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, you know, I think it's Shrek. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's there. You just don't marry ogres. Ogres don't have happy endings. 
you know. It's true. Mm-hmm. Although they a, had a happy ending. There's another thing you could go with this. Like, when you like a girl and you do a bunch of stuff to, like, get the girl interested or whatever, mm-hmm. and then an ogre steals her from you at the last <laughs> second. That's always a bummer. Does yeah. that happen to you a lot, Graydon? Just, like, seven or eight times. Well, Graydon's not exactly an ogre, so, you know. No, no, I'm just <laughs> charming in this he's example. Horrible. Yeah, he screams charming. You know, yeah. somebody else comes, and that's just... Pretty much. Not so, good. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm, that's always awkward. Uh-huh. Yeah. What's our next movie? All right, Shawshank Redemption. In this mm. one, they're married and everything, you know, and she does some things that Hosea's wife does. Which we are not going to mention on air. Yes. Yes. But read Hosea. Mm. Um, yeah, you if know. you're an Old Testament survey, you're probably going to know about this while you're reading your Old Testament. Most people should know that. It's probably mm-hmm. one of the more interesting metaphors in the Bible. Yes. But she does, you know, that thing with not him. Mm-hmm. Some stuff happens, and then he ends up going to jail. <laughs> so this is when this is the kind of relationship you don't want to get in, where you end it in such a way that you go to jail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I don't think that's a good way. I think that there are a lot of celebrity type relationships that end end that way, though. Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah, definitely. And I, I don't know. I think most of them are like made up, but they still make for good publicity, anyways. Yeah, who mm-hmm. don't in the Tom Cruise relationship was it Katie Holmes? that he broke up with it was Katie Holmes I heard was it wait so did she end it or did he that's what I want to know it was actually Katie Holmes and I'm not reading TMZ but um, Uh apparently what uh, Katie Holmes if you were this is what I would have said (laughs) yes but apparently like uh, Katie Holmes while Tom Cruise is out filming somewhere in Iceland she just like ups and leaves takes Suri with her and uh, files for divorce and for some reason there's probably some deep dark secret that Tom Cruise has that you know he's just like willingly signed the divorce papers I mean, I'll be honest, I kind of saw this coming uh-huh. a little bit, because back when this relationship started, mm-hmm. um, Katie Holmes said something to the effect of, when I was little, I always wanted to grow up and marry Tom Cruise. So oh. I feel like... Uh, <laughs> preconceived notion, everybody. There, yeah, and if there's that much of a mm-hmm. age gap, you yeah. should ask some questions. But yeah. their daughter's adorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's and all that we're not saying that if you have like a big age gap, that your relationship isn't going to be successful. But it won't be. It won't be, yes. Mm-hmm. So All right, Parks and Recreation van. Tell us the Parks and Recreation story. Oh, Parks and Recreation. If you are actually a TV buff, uh, this is a sitcom that plays on NBC on Thursday nights. Uh, the breakup here actually happened, I think it's between uh, season four and season five. So Leslie Nope, who's played by Amy Poehler, a Saturday Night Live um, alumna. I think that's the right term. Yeah, she plays a government official here who gets tapped to re- to run for the city council of Pawnee, Indiana. Now, the thing is, apparently, with uh, with with the federal government, there's a rule that you cannot date anyone who is your workmate in the federal government. So now, there's this guy who's Ben. I already forgot his real name, but you know they liked each other. But then, since, since she's running for city council. You know, the relationship might be a source of downfall for her when she runs for city council. So at the end of season four, they break it up. The funny thing is when they come back on season five, it shows their like, you know, how they were after the breakup. Well, Leslie continued her run in the city council, but she's still hoping to have a friendly relationship with Ben. While Ben resigned and uh, now he's making claymation figures. So that was really interesting. And when Leslie actually approached Ben and asked him if he uh, if he wants to have a friendly relationship, Ben was just like, no, we can't be friends at this point. We just broke up. You know, you're nice, you're a great lady, we just can't be friends. And like, you know, that's, oh my gosh. If, 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 uh, Hannah, if a guy tells you that after you've broken up with him, like hypothetically, after you've broken up with him and he tells you, I don't want to be friends with you right now. How- I think that's fair. I think yeah. especially depending on the nature of mm-hmm. your relationship, how serious it was, Yeah. sometimes you just can't be friends because it's really mm-hmm. hard to go back to that because you can never mm-hmm. have undated them yeah i always thought it'd be interesting to end a relationship by saying it's not me it's you and i don't want to be friends just cut the two cliches and flip them around a it's little not bit. me it's you and i don't want to be friends <laughs> you know i mean if you well, ever plan on talking to that person again well you really know what sometimes it sometimes it is that way it's not me it's you it, I, I, I'm not like trying to sound here like a jerk, but you know, sometimes, and you know, when you break up a relationship, it's really like that. Honestly, that's so true. Yeah, actually, one of the uh, the friends that I was with on the road trip to uh, to Minnesota, I am not going to mention her name because there's only two of them. Um, she actually said that you know, I guess when you break up with somebody and you don't want to be friends with them, it's because you've shared like a lot of memories with them. That when you start talking about like events in your life, I mean, you cannot. 
you cannot, you know, uh, describe the event without saying, oh, him and I, and like, it's gonna be like super awkward because, you know, you've just broken up with that person. So, no friends. It's true. Much. Bittersweet memories. Yes, bittersweet memories. Mostly bitter. Amberlynn song. Amberlynn, yes, yes, yes. Like that band. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. We've got uh, Edgar Allan Poe, Lygia. Are, are, mm -hmm. are either of you familiar with this story? I don't think so. I'm familiar with some of his writing, but I don't think I've... Telltale Heart was uh, the one oh, I was familiar with. That's yeah. pretty brutal. But we cannot really like describe the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the not plot. Not on MCR. Up. Yes. Uh -huh. So this is what we're using this one for, is to get a picture of a rebound relationship. This is mm -hmm. what happens in the story. He's married to this girl really likes her mm -hmm. she dies he marries somebody else and then the spirit of the girl who died kind of takes over the new girl's body uh-huh which yep. you know like it goes back to did we talk about this already yet mm -hmm. uh, when, when you kind of so i don't think yeah we must not have well when you kind of like get a girl who just looks like the girl that you've broken up with or the guy that you've broken up with yeah it happens sometimes I it think. happens yeah I mean, sometimes the comic results in movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. again, be careful with your rebound relationships. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, not getting them. Mm -hmm. And second of all, not having your dead wife morph into the new wife. Yeah, that's weird. And yeah. you being, like, really oddly okay with it and not questioning that it at all. That is super creepy. Not yeah. I love Alex. Although I, I think the people who uh, who get like women who just look like the person that they broke up with, or women or men who you know who get like a person that they just broke up with, I think they haven't moved on. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, not. it's like yeah. Super, I don't think yeah. people in rebound relationships ever have really moved on. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. because I mean, if it's rebound, then you haven't moved yeah. on. by definition you haven't moved on. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, you know, I mean, if you've really moved on, it's like, you know, your source of, you know, your source of identity wouldn't be another person. It would be you. So, I don't know. It's just me. No, they're good. <laughs> uh, while we're on the topic of who you're actually getting in a relationship with, mm -hmm. um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, when you accidentally marry a rival spy, that's never good. That I is, love that movie. That's happened to me more times than I can count, honestly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, bet, I bet you have that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's always awkward. Talk about preconceived notions and a lack of honesty in a relationship. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like I totally didn't expect you to shoot at me. Yeah. That yeah. was not part of my blueprint for this relationship. It's really funny, though, that this movie had caused the, uh, the real-life breakup of Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt. I'm so glad we went there. Let's yeah. <laughs> I was so hurt when that happened, honestly. <laughs> like... I love Jennifer Aniston and it killed a little... Everyone like, loves Jennifer sad. Aniston. Here's the Angelina thing. Angelina Jolie? Well, uh, if you watch on. her stuff from, like, earlier in 2000, like, the early part of the first decade of the century, you mm -hmm. can kind of see why I did it. I mean, they were both mm -hmm. pretty, but I would have favored Angelina Jolie a little bit. But then, you know, mm -hmm. she got crazy. Also, oh, yeah. Jennifer Aniston has aged so gracefully, and by aged, I mean she's probably like in her forties. So she's not that old, but for Hollywood, she's old. Oh yeah, she's yeah. old. Uh -huh. But like, she's still gorgeous. Whereas mm -hmm. I feel like Angelina Jolie has just gotten skinny, and her lips have gotten bigger. And well, when you get like six kids and you don't have like a babysitter, <laughs> that's what happens <laughs> to you. <laughs> so, also, I don't think Brad Pitt's aged that well either. Mm -hmm. So, like, he could be in somebody mm -hmm. with somebody over his league right now, mm -hmm. but. Well, yeah. uh, that's what guilt does, but, you know, that's another episode. So. Yeah, that's what <laughs> shooting at people does, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently that was a good way for them to bond. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a lot of honesty that they need in that relationship. Yeah. Uh, yep. That that movie probably led to them having some conversations beforehand, like, okay, mm -hmm. are you actually a spy? Do we need to get anything out of the way before uh, we do this? Are you yeah. really a movie star like you claim to be? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Were we actually in that movie together? Or mm -hmm. All right. Uh, go back to literature for a second. This one's actually in the Bible. Um, this mm -hmm. is our uh, biblical breakup. Yeah, yeah. This is to illustrate um, in-law problems. When David marries the girl whose name looks like Michael, McCall. McCall. Yep. When David marries Michael and <laughs> McCall. Oops. McCall. Maybe we should call her Michelle. Yeah. When David marries Michelle, and uh, then Michelle's daddy tries to kill him, which is King Saul. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm they have to break up i mean if your father-in-law is after you you know what do you do you put a goat you put a goat hair on top of like some circular thing lay it in bed and then you escape through the window yeah that's yeah you know that, that would have been the first thing i would have thought of best way to deal with mm -hmm. the yeah you know, it's just like you cannot enjoy thanksgiving dinner and mm -hmm. dodge spears at the same time you spill the gravy uh -huh. the chicken gets cold yeah the turkey gets cold the turkey gets cold. i don't yeah. want turkey for this thanksgiving because that's all i eat in the sdr they, they do have a lot of turkey. Yeah. 
Really? I thought it was all chicken. It's all chicken, but I never really trust they turkey the... turkey a lot, too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I always just go for the sidebars. Yeah, I, I cook turkey, but I don't eat it. So, yeah. Side note. Um, yeah, that, I feel like that is more than normal in-law problems. There mm-hmm. are always sort of in-law problems, I feel, mm-hmm. because, I mean, it's by definition. Yeah. Yeah, that's an extreme version of an but in-law that's, problem. But that's pretty extreme, the spears yeah. and all that. Yeah. Yeah, th- yeah, there's a lot of in-laws who would like to kill their, you know... A lot of times it's, it's <laughs> figurative spears, not literal mm-hmm. spears. Yeah, so but but this one, it's like literal, it. like twice. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I'm wondering why David went mm-hmm. back for the second Thanksgiving after the first spear. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm good. We're going to have Thanksgiving at our house no, this thanks. year. We'll have, Although, we'll have dominoes this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although, you know what the sad thing about that breakup is? So, you know, they, they've been separated and stuff, and David marries another girl. And then when they, you know, when they came up to, you know, to meet again, she's already married, but then David had to, like, get her back. So talk about, like, you know, forced reconciliation with somebody you've just broken up with. Yeah, I think Uh David actually liked her. That's Mm -hmm. the saddest thing. Like, Saul took her away after, Mm -hmm. you know. I feel like my father would be pretty angry if I married a man and he married someone else, too, though. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe Saul might be a tiny bit justified. Well, I mean, you took, if, maybe he would still be angry, but he shouldn't be if... He gave you to somebody and then took you back and then mm-hmm. that guy married somebody okay, else. That's fair. Yeah. For like a price that we cannot mention here. Ooh. Yes. How much was it? Oh. We're yeah. not gonna mention it. <laughs> <laughs> it this is expensive. MCR. It was, it was like a hundred something, wasn't it? Three hundred. Yeah, but three hundred. We're not gonna mention what yeah. Yeah, it's in the Bible, I said we go for it. Yes, it's in the Bible, so if you want to read it, I think it's in uh, Second Samuel. Somewhere in Second Samuel, so You'll Definitely had to read it for OT, so it could be in anything from Genesis to Isaiah. <laughs> exactly. So far. Yeah. So I uh, hope we're helpful with that. If you ask Kelby for what their mascot is, I believe that's what it was. Oh my gosh, that's Continue. what their mascot is? Continue. Go for it. Okay. Uh, How'd that slide through? <laughs> that's, um... <laughs> ah, uh, the Titanic. Yeah. Titanic, Titanic, yes. Titanic. yes. You that's know, funny. When I was a kid, I loved this movie, but when I grew up, I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I ever like this film? Like, honestly. I mean, apart from, like, The Sinking Ship, which is awesome. You know? I don't know. It's, like, the end. Like, when you when you say to somebody, I am not going to let you go. And then you let go. And then you let go. I mean, what was that? Talk about lying in yeah. a relationship. I mean... I know. Uh, your boat is sinking. Uh-huh. I'm not going to let go. There, really? There wasn't room for him to? No? Exactly. Really? Yeah. Come on, people. On the wood plank? I mean, come on, you're not that heavy. Or they could have died together. Uh huh. That's how it should have ended. That would have been. If they were really going for a dramatic ending, they both should have died. Uh huh. It's kind of like a tragic Romeo and Juliet, but no, she lets him go. Oh, there's our last third. Now we have ten. Romeo and Juliet. Yes, oh, I have a bad experience with that play. I directed it in high school. And, uh, yeah, the girl that I broke up with played Juliet, and I was a direct. Never mind. I don't want to go into there. I'm going to a happy place. Okay. <laughs> so now we're in Van Vera's happy place. Yeah, that's gonna be, that sounded like it was going to be really good. And then we just do it for the audience. You know, it's it's kind of stupid, though. I, I mean, you know, just the premise of it. It's like, oh, I'm going to pretend that I, you know, that I died so that I'm going to be with this person. And then that person thinks you're actually dead. So he kills himself. And then you wake up from your, like, dead state and you find that he's dead. So you killed yourself, too. I think a text would have saved a lot of trouble here. Like, hey, Romeo, yes, we're going to try this out, see if it works. In the version, mm-hmm. one of the versions I watched when we, mm-hmm. um read this in high school mm-hmm. it shows the priest like on a donkey and just sort of like mm-hmm. stopping because you know how he's supposed to like intercept and tell him what's mm-hmm. going on him yep. stopping and like i don't know if he stops to talk to someone or he stops mm-hmm. for a potty break or what the deal is <laughs> yeah. but we're just kind of like priest get with the program haven't they're you bad, read this before bad. you need to be there or probably Die, the, hurry up or and probably the, do- the the donkey was like talking to him or something you know no yeah i don't know that happens yeah dead yeah dead. i was kind of sad way. Mm-hmm. I liked the modern version better. Yeah. Overreaction. Overreaction. Yeah, I think that's what. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that wraps up our uh, top ten mm-hmm. movies and literature examples. If yeah. you have, you know, a better illustration for a bad in-law relationship or, mm-hmm. you know, when you break, break up with somebody and something bad happens, mm-hmm. like you go to jail, you launch a war. Or like machine guns at Thanksgiving dinner. I think that's better than a spear. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a more modern take mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. You know? I'm definitely going to kill somebody. If that's what you want, but uh, if you have any, uh, if you have any other suggestions for like great movies or you know great music that features breakups on it, you can go on our Twitter page and suggest it to us at uh, the letter M on MCR or on our Facebook page. 
Absolutely. Yes. I'd like to thank Evan for listening from my floor. You mm-hmm. are awesome. Go, Evan. Awesome. Yeah. Call B13 also, in general. Go Packers. Yeah, exactly. Go Packers. Go Packers. Go Packers. That's what Evan would say if he was here right now. Uh. Yeah, I think so. I think that was a good, mm-hmm. you know. And Dryer 3 as well. Out. Yeah, Dryer 3 is listening. So call B13 and Dryer 3. Dryer 3 is listening. Yes, Dryer it's a good 3. good week for us. Oh, good. yes. They're my all mom listening. is also listening, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Houghton Ted is also listening because I've offended all of them. So <laughs> they, they all want to yeah. have an opportunity to call in. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll have five minutes at the end. You can just call and blast Van. Get anything out of the way. Maybe yeah. uh, if you're the girl he left <laughs> in the Philippines, you want to give us some commentary. Oh my gosh, I was actually stalking her on Facebook once, and she's actually an accountant right now at Ernst and Young. Don't admit that, Van. Yes. <laughs> Never admit that on nope. live radio. Stalking <laughs> is on the no-no list. You, met, you saw it in the news feed, right? That's what happened. On the news feed, yes. You saw it in the news feed. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to go back to some music. Um, we're going to mm-hmm. try to... This is the part... We've been having fun so far. We're uh-huh. going to try to tone it back a little bit and see if we can learn some stuff. Or if you could be like more bitter, than, yeah, than happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's um, supposed to be breakup night. It's not supposed to be like celebrating breakup night, you know. I want to thank everybody on MCR that I talked about this. We got permission to play an Eminem song. Yes. So yes. you know, straight up, Eminem's not the nicest person in the world. Mm-hmm. He has some issues. His songs tend to be pretty rough. Mm-hmm. But uh, guess what? He's the most popular musician in our country right now. So mm-hmm. we're gonna listen to it. We're gonna figure out uh, the way he thinks. We're gonna figure out. You know, I, I somebody asked, "Are you playing? Are you going to play Eminem because he influences a lot of people?" And partly, yes, that's why we're doing it. Mm-hmm. We're playing it because he's going to influence a lot of people. But we're mm-hmm. also playing it because art and literature and poetry it mm-hmm. it's not it doesn't just shape the culture. It's also shaped by the culture. So partially, mm-hmm. this might influence some relationship mm-hmm. to you know take a similar trajectory or pattern. But it's also because this is already the way relationships work, and mm-hmm. this is already some things that he's dealt with. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it's really funny that uh, we won't do any Chris Brown jokes. He has a greatest <laughs> hits album coming out pretty soon. Rihanna's going to be on the cover. Oh, but, oh my gosh. That was low. <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> this is a uh, part of Love the Way You Lie by Eminem. I'm going to let it play twice. Um, try to listen to, just get the general feel of it the first time, and then see if you can't pick up on some of the lyrics the second time. We got distracted by the phones for a little bit there. Yeah. And uh, also sorry about the script in the middle. Um, <laughs> I put the playlist on repeat, not the song. So that happens. It, it does happen, yeah. Obviously, Eminem has some problems. Rihanna has some problems. Um, who do you want to talk about first? Uh, let's talk about Rihanna. Yeah, her stuff's pretty easy. Um, mm-hmm. Does she really like the way it hurts? Yes or no? Well, uh, I think after 2009, that uh, phrase actually takes on a different meaning for Rihanna. That's true. I mean, I think there's a whole element here about talking about people staying in unhealthy Mm -hmm. relationships and why they do that and what Uh that looks like. I think Mm -hmm. that's like the epitome of unhealthy relationship. Well, it's kind of funny that (laughs) right now, (laughs) you know, so we're not going to go in there. It kind of goes back to the Teo Cruz song we heard, though, mm-hmm. Break Your Heart. Yeah. Like, you know, he's telling her straight up, this isn't going to go well, but, mm-hmm. you know, we can try anyway if you want to. Yeah. And in this song, you know, it's not going well. It's mm-hmm. obviously, there's massive problems. I mm-hmm. don't, most of you should be familiar with this song. You yeah. Know? It's been playing on the radio uh, for like two months now. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's a very popular song. Mm-hmm. And if you're familiar with the rest of this lyrics, especially if you're familiar with the part two that Rihanna had on her album, mm-hmm. there's a lot of violence in this song. There's yeah. a lot, there's a cycle there, um, an abusive relationship mm-hmm. that she feels like she needs mm-hmm. for some reason. And I think yeah. you could make some connections there with Sin. Like, we all feel mm-hmm. like we don't really want it. Like, mm-hmm. we know it hurts, but. We, we don't really know how to get it. out of it, mm-hmm. maybe. A dog comes back to its own vomit. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so maybe Rihanna's the dog and the vomit is her lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> we can argue about that, too. Yeah, yeah so... That's fair. Yeah. And, I, I mean, it's like, you know, it's same with other, like... Uh, I, I mean, let's, let's go out of the, the relationship realm for a minute. Addictions. 
you know, you know that this is something that's going to hurt you, but then you still do it anyway because you always think that it's you know it's going to give you like you know that that high that you know that that life that you've been seeking. I think that's what happens with you know with relationships sometimes, even though it's abusive, even though it's not working anymore, you, you still like keep at it, and it just makes the breakup you know worse you yeah. know, when you actually break up. I think that's a it's a pretty common theme in music. Mm -hmm. You know, she's hurting. But she would rather have a bad relationship than no relationship yeah. at all. She mm -hmm. would ha rather be with somebody who wasn't yeah. good for her than be completely mm -hmm. alone. You get that in Three Days Grace, like the song Pain, where mm -hmm. he says, I'd rather feel pain than nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think people need to feel something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think um, also, like from a female perspective, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people kind of a lot of guys especially wonder why girls will stay with these guys that treat them awfully uh -huh. and um personally i think one of the things is is because of what we mentioned earlier about girls wanting to fix people uh -huh. and about um i find that if a guy can come off nice for a week or even mm -hmm. two weeks forever yeah. that will be cemented in the girl's memory that that's what this guy is like huh. so anything he does afterwards will be like well that's not the real him he's just dealing with stuff right now oh. or it's a stage like so if a girl thinks uh -huh. she loves someone she will make excuses for anything wow. oh well he cheated but mm -hmm. it was just because he was lonely or oh well he does wow. this but it's just you know what i mean so Sounds like a codependent relationship. Stupidly enough. Yeah. Yeah, that wow. happens a lot. So I think that this is a really good example of mm -hmm. that. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, like in her real life, too, it's like, you know, came off of like an abusive relationship and she's back with him. They're doing songs again. <laughs> Chris Brown and Rihanna are? Yes. Oh, wow, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, you know, well, you know, if you're rich and if you always go for breakfast at like Jamaica or something on your private plane, I don't think it's, you know, it's something that really matters. So, yeah. That that goes back to the dog in their own vomit too. Like, mm -hmm. I, I kind of assume that they had a point like here. Like, it wasn't supposed to be this thing where, um, where... Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. they weren't actually, like, endorsing this. I, I assume there was a point here mm -hmm. where Eminem and Rihanna are trying to point out how crazy this is, you know, mm -hmm. like, and saying that they struggle with it. But I thought they were actually trying to help. As mm -hmm. violent as it is and as profane as parts of it are, yeah. I actually liked that they were addressing the issue and kind of mm -hmm. painting a good picture of it. Yeah. But, you know, like like you said, a lot of us know what, what's right and what's wrong and what's stupid and what isn't, and we do yes. it anyway, mm -hmm. which kind of leads us to Eminem's part in this song. Mm -hmm. He says over and over again, especially that one line, um, actually we were only going to do the chorus, but I, uh -huh. we, we did the verse because of the line. Um, he says, uh, come inside and pick up your bags. And mm -hmm. he's, don't you hear sincerity in my voice? It's not that he wasn't sincere. Mm -hmm. He really did plan on doing better. And the next time he got mad, he really did plan on, you know, yes. controlling his anger uh -huh. and restraining himself but again he didn't mm -hmm. so that goes back to the i uh, i think it's paul who says mm -hmm. i know what i'm supposed to do i know what i want to do but i still mm -hmm. don't do it the spirit is willing but the body is weak exactly mm -hmm. so yeah that's uh that could be a good place to mm -hmm. join somebody on their you know when they're understanding the song if you're listening to this song with somebody mm -hmm. you might bring up you know why why can't eminem stop doing this he knows yeah. it's wrong he obviously mm -hmm. knows it's hurting her yeah. Um, and why can't she get out of it? Why Why does she mm -hmm. need to be in a relationship? Even if it's with a guy like, mm -hmm. you know... Yeah. Won't say any names, like a, but... We're not going to say any names, yeah. Don't judge, because they're not books, so... Yeah. And they don't have covers. <laughs> exactly. So. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, that's a good song. And I would, I would honestly encourage you to listen to it a few times. Um, you know, get the edited version if that makes you feel better. Maybe <laughs> just read the lyrics if you can't handle that, you know, scathing anger. But uh, I would encourage yeah. you to listen to it at least a few times and to get an understanding of it. Because it is a popular song. It is a hugely influential mm -hmm artists both of mm -hmm. them and uh and i think some moody students are listening to uh you know to that song too on their playlists yeah yeah it, that's how influential mm -hmm. it's been it really is yeah. one of the most popular songs in the past few years at least mm -hmm. so um yeah. listen to it there is a lot there there's a lot of stuff about relationships there and there's a lot mm -hmm. that you could use so uh we're moving to another song now um break even or falling to pieces i never understood why they have another title in the parentheses but that's what they do <laughs> this is by the script
I think he might be a little better too. Uh huh. Might assign him a number real. Mm hmm. Yeah. Although I, I like it that uh, he's now praying to a god that he doesn't believe in. Yes, that's a, that's a very interesting line. I actually yeah. cited that line in a paper I wrote in uh, high school when I went to community college. So mm -hmm. I think it shows, first of all, how important the relationship was to mm -hmm. him. Um, the best part of me was always you from the chorus to be, uh -huh. you know, a way to back that up with an actual quote. Mm -hmm. But um, it also shows where do people turn when, they, when they're in pain? Like... If, yeah you know yeah I, I know it's like we have like a lot of coping mechanisms where you know when we're in pain i think we've mentioned some of them um uh you know like earlier on in the show you know there's some people who you know go to ice cream parlors like you know yeah. just gorge on ice cream there are some people who just like you know go to a rebound relationship because they think that their identity is with another person you we know, have denial in somebody things. that I used to know or yeah. just like refusing to accept it and mm -hmm. the man who can't be moved. We have a we have a lot of examples of people, mm -hmm. but it's natural to turn to God in those times. It's mm -hmm. like part of the general revelation yeah. thing where uh, I think Paul says in mm -hmm. was it Romans mm -hmm. that we we all have Yes, that's Romans. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's like God reveals himself around nature so that uh you know no one is without any excuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you you said this when we were um talking about before we started the show um mm -hmm. this is another aspect of how god works in our lives when yes. we're in pain. brokenness yes when you're hurt and when you're broken that's when you begin to see more of god you actually see more you know another side of god which is you know being the comforter when you're mourning or when you're broken you know he's always there you know i mean he's not going to put you back the way that uh that you were but you know i mean when somebody's broken and god works through them god just shines from them and you know that's i think that's what that's what god wants in our lives that you know we are not making ourselves whole he is making us whole so exactly you know, yeah i it, think too that um when we're broken the thing we run to shows a lot of what the gods in our lives really are because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when things are good yeah. it's really easy to praise god and oh yes mm -hmm. what but then when we're broken whatever our vice i mm -hmm. guess is whether it's yeah. a rebound relationship or if it's alcohol like we mentioned mm -hmm. earlier or if it's just bitterness it shows yeah. a lot mm -hmm. um a lot of who who the gods in our mm -hmm. life are in this song yeah. i think it's safe to say the god in his life was her and then mm -hmm. when his god failed him he had to turn to the real god even though he didn't actually mm -hmm. think that he doesn't believe do him yeah yeah i don't know maybe we're thinking into this line a lot more than he meant but mm -hmm. if you read the script's lyrics um i know a song the song nothing Mm -hmm. It's another great lyrics. They great have really song. deep lyrics, mm -hmm. really uh, thoughtful lyrics. So I don't. I think that was actually a pretty good. Yeah. This is actually what he tried to turn to mm -hmm. when it didn't work. So um. Well, I mean, with any pop culture uh, reference, you know, I mean, there's always something that we can uh, we can take from it. You know, something mm -hmm. that we can you know some. I mean, some metaphors that we can stretch to you know to religious um, grounds or something. You know, there's always something that you can learn with anything, really. That's why th that's that's part of why we're doing the letter M. You know, exactly. So you know, we we, we go into like pop culture references, and sometimes we can get like spiritual nuggets of truth from them. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're listening to this with somebody who just broke up, you might be able to say, "Guess what? I've been dumped before, and yeah. I did turn to God, and He did soothe me." And, yes. You know, I mm -hmm. still had to face the consequences of being an idiot, but mm -hmm. you know, because God doesn't really always take away the often pain take yeah. away the pain but uh -huh. you can relieve it if not at least mm -hmm. temporarily so we can kind of get our heads back together yeah so um one more song we're gonna do i know you mind if we go over time guys that was adele's turning tables this is the letter mm -hmm. m i'm Graydon mccashin you guys want to throw your names in there real quick hannah soda and ben farrell very good um that has to be the saddest song in the world well, everything that Adele writes is either about breakups or anything sad. Yeah, yeah. I don't think she's a very mm -hmm. happy person. But <laughs> either that or just she just figured out that that really works for her. So, Hey, if being unhappy means being paid like $50 million a year and winning Grammys, it's like, you know, I'll stay with that. Yeah, worse things could happen. That's fair. Yeah. So, uh, I know we went over again. I'm sorry. Uh, real quick, this is one of those songs that you could mm -hmm. really use. Um, and actually, this is one of those songs that you should probably... Uh, apply to yourself a little bit too yeah because mm -hmm. i think we all tend to do this with god and with people mm -hmm. so anybody want to take this or 
You can go ahead, Hannah. Um, I think it's interesting um, that she says next time I'll be my own savior. Mm-hmm. And that kind of makes me wonder if she was relying on him to be her savior mm-hmm. as it's so easy in a yeah. relationship to um, just become so dependent on someone mm-hmm. and definitely put them in the place of God in your life. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. even if it's like a good, healthy relationship, which I have no idea if this was, it's really easy to trust in this person mm-hmm. and what they do for you. And then if they suddenly aren't part of your life anymore, uh-huh. whether it's a breakup or honestly, if they die, like that's possible. Mm-hmm. Permanent breakup. Yeah. Then, yeah. Titanic. Like, <laughs> what, what then? Who's your savior then? Mm-hmm. It's also interesting saying that she'll be her own savior. It implies that a she had the wrong savior before, which we're going to assume mm-hmm. it was the guy. Yeah. Um, and also she realized that she needs to be saved for some from something, mm-hmm. whether that's um, loneliness or maybe sin somehow. I'm not yeah. quite sure how that would work, but mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times, even if you're not a Christian and mm-hmm. you meet somebody who's not a Christian, they're nice. They can make you feel like you need to be a better person. So uh-huh. maybe she did feel mm-hmm. like, in a sense he drove her to mm-hmm. be better in some way well i mean sometimes it's it's kind of healthy to just shut down yourself for a while honestly you know it's just because like for example there are some people unfortunately who when they get hurt they actually do more harm when they're doing something than when oh, they're, yeah. yeah so i think for some people it's better to just close them you know close themselves off for for a little bit and then you know go back into the world again you know it's I, people do cope differently you know, and you know that's just part of how God made us. You know, mm-hmm. where we're all different in in our own ways. Yeah, but to entirely close yourself off from love and from like other people for like e- eternity. Oh no, 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 that's not gonna work. <laughs> it shows a couple things. I think it shows how yeah. deep the pain is and mm-hmm. how far that can go. Yeah. Um, which honestly, I think as much emphasis as we put on God saving us from sin, uh-huh. I think He also saves us mm-hmm. from things in our past, regrets, bitterness, mm-hmm. shame, and stuff like that. And I think yeah. we totally miss that when we evangelize. Mm-hmm. Like, Absolutely. God can turn your life around. It's hard to convince people that they're evil, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's yeah. a lot easier mm-hmm. to convince people that they're hurting. Mm-hmm. So that they're broken, because yes. who doesn't feel broken sometimes? Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, even if they, they don't straight admit it to mm-hmm. you, they know that you're right, and they'll know like it'll trigger something in their mind Mm -hmm. um but as far as what the the overall theme of the song is adele she gets hurt by something so she feels the need to close herself off from it Mm -hmm. to protect her from further pain Mm -hmm. and a lot of people in our culture where you start going to church when you're young you accept it and then you don't understand it and bad things happen to you and from that you blame god for Mm -hmm. what happened leave the church and you leave the uh, the christian community